Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Snap Material. We are back for the month of March, and we are rocking and rolling, getting ready for the upcoming season. Oh, well, it's already here. Avengers versus X-Men. We're going to be talking about our experience with the Black Order, which was February's fun time there in Marvel Snap, that February season. And we're going to talk about our unlocks. We're going to talk about what strategies we ran into, what uh, what fun times we had with the the lo- specific locations. And we're also going to have our top five. Be expecting that this uh, this week. And of course, we've got a battle on tap for you. Let's go ahead and jump into our discussion about February 6th drop. February 6th of 2024, the Black Order had dropped for Marvel Snap. Right over there is Evan Bevins. Evan, are you ready to talk about... Are you ready to talk about the Black Order? Oh, yeah. Was it Black Order month? I've, yeah, I'm ready. A, I, I'm ready. Sorry. I didn't, have, I didn't have a better joke loaded. First up, Black Swan. A three-cost, five-power card on reveal until the end of the next turn. Your one-cost cards cost zero. What was your experience with seeing Black Swan? She's the premier card. You got her if uh, you got the season, right? Yeah, and uh, I did not get the season, but uh, but some people did, and uh, I saw her in some games, and she gave some people five points when they played her. <laughs> and uh, in theory, she also made their one-cost cards cost zero, but I, I didn't really notice it that much. Yeah, what I expected was Thanos deck is going to have Black Swan in it. I don't understand why somebody wouldn't, because if you're going to have a handful, the likelihood of you having a handful of Infinity Stones, Mm -hmm. then boom, you lay her out there and you just flood the flood the play field with them and then clear them off with Killmonger or something like that. And I never saw it. I don't know if it's just because I didn't have the card in my hand. Number one, I would I didn't have Black Swan in my hand, nor did I have Thanos in my hand. I can't say that that I I practiced that combo or anything like Jesse, that. Jesse, so are, are, a... are you somehow suggesting that having Black Swan in your deck would increase the likelihood that you would see a deck with Black Swan? I... <laughs> <laughs> That's possible. Um... <laughs> it's possible. It is possible. But yeah, I I really did not run into any anything that made me go, oh my goodness, this card is completely overpowered nothing like that it seemed like she came out and even the strategy i thought everybody would employ didn't happen well the the infinity stones makes makes the most sense and since she did end up uh, hanging with thanos in the run-up to the second seek well the second secret war that wasn't secret war two actually it was the third secret war it was. Oh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we're going to need a chart and some yarn. Anyway, it makes sense for her to be compatible with, with Thanos, just like the popular team of Zero and Ebony Maw. But right. um, it, it, that, that does make sense. But yeah, I, I didn't. I know when I saw her, I'd be like, oh, okay, there's going to be a, a lot of one cost cards coming in. But unless, like you said, unless you're clearing them out with Killmonger or Venom or somebody like that, you, you don't want to flood the the locations with infinity stones. Cause then you don't have any place to play other cards. I, there's been lots of times where I've been like, Oh man, I can get all these cards in here. And then uh, as it goes on, I'm like, I don't have any place to play my cards. Right. But yeah. I, I did not see her a lot. A three, five is, is not bad. And getting a chance to play uh, a one cost card for zero cost. That that's good too. So I can see her being useful, but I don't know. I didn't, I didn't get her, but she seems to me from the outside looking in one of those cards where you think, Hey, this would be good. And then she gradually gets squeezed out of your deck by, by right. something else. Right, right. All right, next up was Super Giant. Four cost, five power on reveal. All cards played next turn. Don't reveal until the end of the game. I had one encounter, I think, with Super Giant. And it really didn't seem to affect me that much. And I, I remember when we were talking about this card, I was like, okay, this this card will be fun to get out there and really screw somebody up because they want it to, to show up and do an on reveal right there at that moment. But regardless, did not run into it very much at all. I can't really say I ran into, I, I can't really say that there's a, a great super giant deck out there that I'm just not aware of. What about you? I, I saw her a few times, and I'm pretty sure she messed up a play of mine once, but I, I can't remember what it was. Couldn't have been that bad. I saw her less often than I did Black Swan. I I did get to thinking, one, she's a character that I, 
I had a Hero Clicks figure of her. I always thought she was kind of neat, and I don't know why. I can't point you to any great Super Giant stories or anything like that, but I don't know. But I did start using a few more discard decks this month. We'll, we'll talk about that later, I'm sure. And I could oh, yeah. see her being, because uh, if Modok and Hela are a dangerous combination, if you get them in the right order. Yep. And Invisible Woman's a great way to make sure that they don't do their thing until you want them to. And if you don't get Invisible Woman, that's not very helpful. So I, I got to thinking I would like to circle back and get Super Giant just as a as an Invisible Woman backup because backup. I'm I'm not sure now. I don't know if a four cost five power backup is an ideal backup, but that's the use I see for I. I tried three times to get her, and I got everybody else in that spotlight cash, but not, oh, oh no. including my thousand tokens. But I did not get. Yeah, I got. Well, we'll get to that in the unlocks. But I got Zabu, Darkhawk, and a thousand. But I did not get Super Giant. And then I, I decided to save my keys for another card down the road. The only thing I could see is, well, eh, maybe I get her in there, and if I get Hella before Modok, I can drop her. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm not even, and not even sure that, that it works, but that's because I was playing some of those decks and I was like, man, if I don't get Invisible Woman, I don't have any other option with these guys. And right. that's the only other card I can think of that that would do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next up was Call Obsidian. Four cost, ten power. You can only play this where you have a one cost card. And I did not get call obsidian but i played against them quite a bit it seems like yeah. a lot of people I, I saw them a few times i didn't try to get him because i was saving my keys yeah but yeah I, I i saw him here and there and he's a he definitely works in conjunction with thanos and black swan it's good good design right right and of course shang chi if you got shang chi in your pocket which i was playing with shang chi the week that this guy dropped because i knew that i was probably going to run into him a few times and uh, yeah, Shang Chi took him out pretty easy. But again, he he dropped in there where you had a one cost card, and it would turn the tables pretty early if if you get him out there early. Yeah, yeah, I, I can definitely see him being useful. I see in your notes yeah. you said would would work well with Thanos. I see. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you, you got all those one cost cards. That if you're playing Thanos, you're probably going to have a one cost card uh, at just about every location. It'd be good good to, to throw in there. He, he, He's another card that you could use to get Scar's cost down earlier because you don't have that many 10-cost cards that are below 6. Every little right. bit helps. I could I could see him being useful in there. He He's not he's not a card you build a deck around, but I can see him as you're finishing off a deck going, yeah, Call of Obsidian works in this one. For sure. You never know, too. You might have – somebody may think that they've got – They've got that. Uh, they've got that lane one, and at the end, you've you've got enough to where you can really quickly overtake that lane yeah. uh, by laying out Call Obsidians. All right, or some good up, blob fodder. Oh yeah, yeah. Or de maybe in the olden days. <laughs> <laughs> right. Next up is Corvus Glaive. Three cost, five power. On reveal, discard two cards from your hand to get plus one max energy. Well, I think we both sprung for this one, right? No. You did not. I, th I, I was going to because I was like, oh, yeah, he's going to he's going to work great. I love plus one max energy. I like, I like Havoc. I'm like, he, he could work well with Havoc. And then I forget who it was. I should give credit where it's due. But there was somebody on Twitter who was like, I don't understand everybody getting all excited about Corvus Glaive. Uh, it's it's random discard. And I was like, you know what? He's right. I, I didn't even try for him. OK. All right. I definitely dropped it. Go ahead. But you like chaos more than I do. <laughs> I do. I embrace the chaos. Yeah, I knew that we were going to be talking about the next card after this one, Proxima Midnight. I, I thought to myself, if I could get both of these cards run one after the other, they would work great in concert oh, yeah. with each other. And that's Corvus, a good design. Not only are they both in the Black Order and hanging with Thanos, but they're actually married. Oh, yeah. Yes, that. Perfect. Yeah, this this is a good example of cards that make sense together in the comics working together in the game. Right, right. But also, sure. I, I don't like Corvus Glaive. Not a, not a fan, huh? No, I don't know. I don't know what it is about him. I, I don't think I've read enough. Just like I said, I said, I haven't read enough about Supergiant to find Supergiant interesting. Right. I haven't really read enough about Corvus Glaive. He was in the movies and he's just kind of, eh. but I don't know. Dude just rubs me the wrong way. It's like a Sebastian Shaw in space. <laughs> I ended up getting the card. I was like, okay, I'm going to try and figure out a way to use this guy to his full potential. The The main thing was, I actually think that 
this was the first time I used the auto deck feature and actually used the deck and was impressed. Okay. Really impressed with how it was how it put things together because you were I mean, impressed threw, with the Squirrel Girl deck it made for me. I, <laughs> well, Squirrel but yeah, Rebro. I, Squirrel Rebro. It ended up I put together a pretty great deck where it's discard. It's getting rid of the cards. Gambit was in there. We had Swarm in there. We had Modok was part of that. Uh, it was mm-hmm. there was there was quite a bit and getting those cards. I think I swapped out. I might've swapped out a couple of things after a few plays, but it was only overall. It was pretty, it was pretty decent, but anyway, yeah, I was throwing Wong on that to get two energy, which happened at one point. If I had, oh, nice. yeah, if I had, if I had four cards that I could really get, get rid of. And I think I had Helicarrier in there too, which was oh, just okay. nice. swapping things. I ended up creating a deck that had a uh, Helicarrier in there. And oh my goodness, Quinjet. If I can get Quinjet out there, Helicarrier brings in all these other cards at one less cost now. It was, and I had, plus I was, if I could get two energy off of that thing, I mm-hmm. was doing, I was doing pretty good. But, but yeah, I, I liked Corvus Glaive. One of the cards that I wanted to get with my spotlight keys for sure this season. Any other, any other thoughts on Corvus? You were definitely craving a Glavin, huh? No, oh, was I ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have seen him a lot. I, I can't say that that I see him and I'm like, oh, crap, it's Corvus Glaive. I, I can't. Now, maybe it's just because I'm looking at the cards and I'm not counting the, the costs and, and he is pushing them over the top. I didn't really keep track. But, yeah, I just in all my stuff, I went more toward knowing what what you're going to discard. Mm-hmm. OK, I mean, I think basically I have... he's, he's a little bit cheaper and a little bit better payoff than than Hellcow. Yeah, I had a situation where I think I had Wong on. Oh my goodness! I want to say I had Wong on Onslaught Citadel. Oh, nice! <laughs> I laid out Corvus Glaive, and I ended up I was able to discard every single one of my cards that I needed. It, it had the Helicarrier in there, and then what was funny is Helicarrier gets discarded, and all these other cards show up, and then Corvus Glaive is still going through them. Another two, and nice. then another two, and I'm like, oh my gosh! It was it was pretty funny to watch that. And at the end I had plus four energy to, and no cards to really play anything. Oh, kind of suck. Well, hopefully you had sunspot. <laughs> nope. I, I was he, what I all, what always yeah, ended up have happening. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did. Okay. I'm, I'm fairly certain with what I've noticed a lot of times is for some reason I would never get sunspot out there first hand and my first hand. And it always worked against me for some reason. And, and then I so saw, I was just like, okay, I'm not even going to mess with this anymore. But anyway, all right, moving now, on. Did you ever try him with, with Havoc? I don't have Havoc. I oh, do not bad. have Havoc. I would Sorry. love. I would love to, though. Yeah, because we mean, talked about I mean, counter. That just gives you that just gives you Havoc's bonus without the penalty. Yeah. Well, all right. Next up, Proxima Midnight, four costs, seven power. When this is discarded, jumps to your lowest power location that isn't full. What do you think, man? I think it was on my second key that I, I, I got her. She just went right in my, first of all, my most strong deck. And then I, I did, I probably had three different discard decks I was trying out. And there, there's no reason not to put her in there. I, I mean, might have to try most strong pretty soon. I, at, I have, at, at worst with her, you get her on turn four and you haven't had a chance to discard her and there's nothing else to play. And she's one point better than the things. Just another reason never to put Ben Grimm in a deck. No, oh, poor guy. Oh. Uh, uh, what a revolting development. But <laughs> yeah, if if you get down to it and you're like, I need a four cost card, should I put the thing in or should I put Proxima Midnight in? She's one point more. And if I get Sokovia, then maybe I get her for free. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I had her out there first game she immediately became a factor she gets up getting discarded and and shows right up i'm like hey this is actually and we both knew when we were talking last month that she was going to be one of the ones that was the card for the season yeah he's not a game breaker but no it, it, it there's if you're playing discard why would you not have her in your deck yeah the the disadvantage of discard is losing a card that's in your hand well you don't lose her in yeah. fact, you get seven points onto the board in your lowest location. There's not much of a drawback to it. Yeah, at and all. maybe you get two points added to Morbius, or right. you get a seven-point Ebony Blade if you've got the Black Knight in play. Usually, I'd want to discard somebody a little higher, but I'd get an extra seven-point card yeah. <laughs> that yeah. can't be uh, reduced or destroyed. Yeah, there's just, there's just no reason, if you're, if you're playing discard, there's no reason not to use her. 
Mm -hmm. All right, locations for last season. Sanctuary 2, add a random Infinity Stone to your hand. And I thought they were fun. I, I, I remember last month when we were talking, I was like, oh, geez, an Infinity Stone, yeehaw. And then you kind of talk some sense into me, like, hey, you might draw a card or it may give you something, give you a bonus for one cost, which is then after playing with the Infinity Stones, I was like, oh, you know what? This is since I don't play with the Infinity Stones, since I don't mm. have Thanos, I don't I don't know the advantages these things have. And I was having a good time. I legioned, of course, uh, which gave everybody Infinity Stones. Yeehaw. But regardless, you were able to throw some stuff out there. Was I getting a better Infinity Stone than that guy? Was I getting the Power Stone, um, a one cost, three power card? Uh, or was I getting something the soul or was I getting the soul stone or was he made some things interesting, but yeah. all in all, it was, it was, it was a location. Yeah. I, I see it all the time and I, I'm like, wait, what does that one do again? What do I, <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it confused, I guess, because of the Roman numerals with Tarnax four. I'm like, oh, this is the one. No, wait. And nope. it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, but it, it's an interesting wrinkle. Like I said, it, it gives you an avenue to get infinity stones other than Thanos. Not bad. How many times have you not had sunspot and you've had one, one energy left over it yeah it's there, there's there's not really a downside to it it's not gonna change your change the game or your strategy but a couple things go the right way it, it can help mm -hmm. probably right. not gonna hurt you yeah okay next up black vortex <laughs> i'm gonna let you go first here but the the first card you play here becomes a random six cost card what was your experience with black vortex i had had fun with it but it didn't didn't change a whole lot for me. Let's see your notes. I did get uh, Destroyer once or twice. <laughs> and I, I, saw... I forget if it was me or somebody else that got a got an Ultron early on, and nobody wants that. Yeah, somebody posted on Reddit, the ultimate is, I think it was something called like the ultimate Black Vortex play. And it had both guys lay something on Black Vortex, and both of them became Ultron on the first turn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, of, you know, most of the time you're trying to get a six cost card out there early, and Ultron's the one you do not want early. <laughs> yeah, I saw Ultron once. I do remember seeing a, a Destroyer, but Destroyer's one you'd you'd like earlier instead of later. Oh yeah, you'd um, want that. You'd want that early a turn three. If you can get a yeah. turn three Destroyer, it's not really going to impact your side that much, most likely. Right. Should yeah, it 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 was neat. It, it was fun. For some reason, I was thinking that it was like Tarnax Four that it it did it every time. And then and once once I realized that, I'm like, okay, well that's cool. I'll find a card I don't need and toss it on a Black Vortex. But I wasn't wasn't really counting on a lot. Again, though, I didn't uh, I didn't just Legion everything. Right. Right. Well, you Delightful know, I was going to do that. I was going to do that. That's for dang sure. It occurred to me at some point that Mysterio is a card that is played, considered played, in all three slots. If you lay right. out Mysterio, then the other two Mysterios that show up, obviously, if you if you combo that with Bishop, that's why Bishop's power goes up three times, because right. you're laying out three cards by playing that two-cost Mysterio. I start, The wheels start turning, and I'm like, okay, it's Legion time. Initially, I'm like putting this deck together, and I'm like, okay, I got to get Psylocke in there. I've got to get, I've got to get Wave, and I'm going to throw out Legion on turn four. And then it starts to occur to me that I don't want to do that because not only do I get the bonus once every location turns Black Vortex, so does my opponent because they yeah. have another three turns to get this. I was like, okay, how do I make it work to my advantage then? And the key was to. Mainly, I was you had to have magic in there uh, to get you a turn seven, mm -hmm. and then you legion black vortex as long as you have dis the disadvantage, as long as they have played their cards first, then you play legion on black vortex on and then lay out Mysterio on that same spot uh -huh. to get to get him to show up on the other two slots, and then you have two six cost cards that will show up on that last turn, along with Legion and Mysterio, the four point Mysterio nice. that you're going to get. I chased that combo for hours <laughs> and could not get it, man. There was oh, no yeah. way I could, I could never get the thing to work. And by also there'd be situations where I would overplay myself and not have a way to play Mysterio correctly until finally I, the one, the video that I sent you was after about three videos of me losing mm -hmm. and thinking I was going to win. But I, I screwed something up. But finally, I got the one the one video that I sent you, which was where I had 
this, I was able to play Legion and then Mysterio and the guy was beating me and he ended up, he had, he had the advantage laid out uh, a bunch of cards on that last turn, but it all came down to the last black vortex that I, that I had turned whatever that was into and out pops the Hulk <laughs> and mm. the Hulk puts me at, at a tie, but luckily I put Kitty pride there too. I must have had an extra energy somehow. And then Kitty pride as well. But anyway, Nice. That was my, I had a fun time with Black Vortex because it, it was definitely a game changer and it, it created chaos just like I, just like I love. You're watching people <laughs> you're watching people emote and and scream arg and why would you do that or whatever it is. Um, <laughs> but it was it was fun. It, it, I had a great time with that location. So nice. I, I, I think uh, Black Vortex goes up on the list for me when it comes to right up there close to Tarnax 4. It's not going to it's not going to beat Tarnax 4 in chaos, but it's definitely <laughs> up there anyway. All right. That is the Black Order season for February of 2024. Thanks a lot for joining us. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for the next installment of Snap Material.